Hi and welcome to this Fusion 360 tutorial. Today we're going to look at the hole and thread feature in Fusion 360. So as you can see on the screen we have four activities or four challenges which will either introduce or develop your existing knowledge about these features. So let's get straight into it. So what we've got here is a simple extrude in Fusion 360 and I've created on this top surface three points to locate the holes. So to insert a hole, we need to click on a hole at the top here, or we go into create to select hole or press H on the keyboard. The first thing it's gonna ask me is what surface I want to start the hole from, which is top surface. And it gives me a preview of what's been selected. What we're gonna do is place the hole on that point there. So that's where the hole, where the points become handy of when creating holes. So we're going to look at the, first of all, is the types of holes that you can get. So we've got a few uh, options here at the top. So we've got what's called a simple hole. We've got the next one. This gives us a counter bore, as you can see at the top, but we can adjust that in a second. And then what the third one looks like is a countersink. So we're going to start with just a simple hole to start with. So this doesn't have any sort of shape at the top of it. It just starts with the size of the hole, which could be determined, okay, here at the bottom. So we could say, for example, we want a six millimeter hole. The angle at the bottom, which is for the drill, is a standard 118 millimeters. That could be changed if you want to. And then the depth of the hole here is 25, and that could be changed to say 35. So what we've got there is a simple hole that goes straight down, okay, 35 millimeters, and it's six millimeters in diameter. And if we click OK, and we can have a look at the cross section, and you can see there the type of hole we've got. So a very simple hole, which has got basically this at the bottom to represent where a drill would remove that material. And if we zoom out, and then turn the analysis off again, what we're going to do this time is go up to hole and we'll try one of the other techniques. So we're going to go onto the top surface, place it on that point, and it's remembered my details from before in terms of depth and the size. But this time we're going to have a look at a counter bore. So a counter bore allows us to create this bore here, which is basically a slightly bigger hole at the top. So if you've got, say, a machine screw or something like that, then that could sit nice and flat in, in that uh, recess there. And again, we could change the size of this. So we've got the depth. This time, we've got some additional information here. So if the hole is 6 millimeters, we may want to change this to something like 12 millimeters. Okay, or maybe 10 millimeters, depending on the size of what you're going to use. Then we can adjust the depth. So how far do we want that to go down? So if you think of a machine screw or bolt or something like that, you're thinking of the depth for the head on there. So we might say like five millimeters. And again, any of this can be changed depending on the features or the size that you want to achieve. So at the moment, what we've done there is again, created a hole this time but with a counter bore at the top. So it's the same depth as last time, same diameter. And if we have a look and compare the two, you can see the clear differences between the two. So if we had put, say, a, a bolt or something into here, a machine screw, the top of that would sit, okay, proud of the surface. But because here we've created a counter bore, it would sit within that, okay? And we'll go through later on a few more details of how we can use standard sizes for these, okay, features as well. So again, if we go up to the home button and click hole, I'm going to click this top surface and we're going to place it on there this time. I kept the sectional view on this time so we can see what's happening. And then what we've got this time is we're going to go for a countersink. So a countersink again adds something similar to a counter bore, except it adds a slight angle. So again, we've got different dimensions we could set here. So this is the total diameter. So we might want to set that to eight. We've then got the angle, all right, and that can be changed depending on what you want the angle to be. And then we've got the angle at the bottom again, 118, and we've got the, the size of the hole again. 
okay? But it all depends on, obviously, the dimensions you put in will update, okay, the size of this. So if you're using a, a fixing which has, okay, this countersink head, then the countersink head will sit nicely in there, okay, and the top of the fixing will sit the top surface of the, the body that you're actually creating it in. So again, you can see that it's very, very similar to the other ones in terms of this dimension is the same, the, the hole size and the depth. But what we've got is an extra feature there with this angled hole, okay, at the top. So what we're gonna look at next is different type of thread features. Having just looked at the type of holes we can create, we're now going to look at the types of threads we can create. So if we go into these and have a look at the options that have been selected, so we get this first one here. It's been located in the correct position we want it, okay? And what we've got here is a counter ball, so the hole type, so we've gone through those already. This time what we've created is a clearance hole. And then what we've got, once we decide that we're going to use a clearance hole and we're not going to use a simple hole, okay, or any of these other options, it comes up with standard sizes now. So we've got some options in here. So we can go into the standard and we can choose what we want to use. So the standard of the fixing that's going to go inside that particular feature. So you've got different ones in there from the ISO, okay, metric, and what I'm going to choose is metric. It then gives you options of the hex head bolt all the way down to socket head cap screw. And you might be thinking, well, why do I need to know that? Because if you choose that particular type, what's quite clever is if you go into the size that you want and say I put M6, M8, M10 or whatever, okay, it will automatically know, for example, that socket head there, it would already know the countable size okay from the standard so i don't have to go and try and find that out okay or get one of the actual fixings and, and measure it okay by hand all right it automatically knows those dimensions there it also knows the drill okay the actual drill size for that and um, the only thing that you need to determine is the the depth of the hole so maybe 40 millimeters and again the angle of that drill if you wanted a drill. If you don't want to drill it, you could also just put that as a flat. And as you can see, that will flatten off and it, that option goes away. So that's a very good way of adding sort of clearance holes and then giving yourself the options of choosing some standard, okay, fixings. If we come to this next one and have a look, again, we've positioned it on this top surface and we've used that point to position it. And we're going for, again, a counter bore. But this time, what it's going for is a tapped hole. And a tapped hole gives you then two options here. So what we've got in a moment is a full tapped hole. That means the tapped or the threaded, okay, part of it goes all the way down the hole. So it goes the full length. And at the moment, it's going down 40 millimeters from that top surface all the way down, okay, because that includes the size is countable. And then we've got the angle at the bottom, if you wanted that, or you could turn that off again, as you can see. And then we've got this. Now we can't choose that because it's grayed out. And the reason it's grayed out again is we've got different sizes in here. So we could come on here and choose a particular size. So we could come in here like so. We decide on what we're going to be using. So for example, I'm going to come and choose a six millimeter one. We tell it in what's classed as the designation, which basically is to do with the pitch, okay, of that uh, fixing. So we've got an M6 by one, you could choose any of the other options in there. And it gives it a particular class. And then you need to decide whether that's gonna be a right-handed thread or a left-handed thread, depending on what you're actually designing, for example. Then the last option is modeled. We'll go into a bit more detail about that later. So that one is modeled, and if we untick it, it creates a cosmetic thread. So you've got modeled and then cosmetic. And then if we come further up, the other option that we've got with this tabbed hole is to create an offset. 
So say we didn't want, say we got a hole going down to there, but we don't want for some reason, okay, this thread to go all the way down, then we could create what's called an offset. So at the moment, okay, from that top distance there, that is going down 10 millimeters, okay. If we then change that, grab that one and say 30, okay, it will go down 30 millimeters from that distance. So again, you've got control over the depth of the thread there as well, or we can go back to full and update that. And then the final one we're gonna have a look at, if you go to edit, is the whole type we've selected this time is a countersink. And instead of having the simple one, we've now added this taper tapped. And this comes up with a few different options. So you could choose the angle here, you could choose the diameter of that uh, base of the hole at the top, and then you've got the depth of the hole as well. And again, once again, if you want the drill at the bottom, you've got the angle. If not, you can remove that as well. And then what you've got here, once again, okay, as you can see, this is grayed out here because that has been referenced by the sizes I choose here. So again, you can look at your different types of thread type and the range of options there. You can then look at your size, okay, within those options. And again, once again, you could choose whether it's a right-handed thread or a left-handed thread. And then what that would do it was then it would then model what you've obviously set in here. And then we click OK, and then we've done that as you can see on there. So we've gone through, okay, if we just choose say one of these, okay, we've gone through the different hole types. We then come down and have a look at the tap types. And then within those, we've had a look at the extra options that you can choose within here. Okay, so there's a wide range of uh, methods of creating different types of holes. And also, it's a very good option in terms of saving time, especially when you've got to work out certain sizes in terms of drill sizes, in terms of counterbore sizes, okay? If you use these options up here, then that will actually, it will work it out for you as long as you choose the correct thread type, okay? And obviously your size, and it will work those features out for you. So that's how you could create, okay, a range of different holes in your models. Creating a hole on a curved surface like this cylinder is quite straightforward in Fusion. If you click on the hole, select the surface, you can then, obviously move and position where you want the hole to go. However, what you've got to take into consideration, if we have a look from this top view, depending on the type of hole you're going to create, okay, you will see that the head of the fixing that you're gonna put in there will protrude from that curved surface. So therefore, you're gonna to have to think about the depth, especially if you're using a counter bore, or if you're using a countersink, the depth of that area there you need to take into account. So if we come to this hole that I've created here, you can see what the issue that we've got. So say this is going to go all the way through, so it's a through hole and it's a counter bore. What we've got at the moment here, if we go up to clearance and we set this as a um, 10, so M10 metric socket head. It's gonna stick out like so. Now, I don't have any control of this depth here because what I've done is I've gone in, I've set it to these options here, okay? It's working out that that would be the standard size, 18 by 10 millimeters. And it's working out that standard size. But I want to sort of move it further in so the head of this fixing is going to sit within that surface there. So what I'm going to do now, if I change it from clearance, okay, to simple, it will remember the sizes. So then what I could do, okay, is change this depth here to say 13 or 14 millimeters. And then that will then allow my, the head of my fixing to sit a bit further in. Okay, to, to calculate the size of that, so if we just click 
and do. To calculate the size of that, if we click sketch, click on this top surface here. And if we click on a straight line, and I'm going to select both of those and add a tangent. Okay, and I'm just going to go back and check this size here. So I've gone for, because to remember the sizes, okay, it's an 18 millimeter in diameter. So I'm going to go to my sketch. I'm going to, okay, select an airline for that, snap it to that surface. Okay, and I'm going to dimension it there to there, nine millimeters because that's half of the 18. Now, if I take this measurement here, okay, so it's three millimeters there. So if I just hide that sketch, okay, go back into here, all right, with setting all the clearances and everything here, it would suggest that needs to be 10. But if I now make that 13, okay, what we should have, is the head should sit just about there, okay, within that feature. So that's really important to take that into account if you are wanting to create a hole on a curved surface is how much the head of your fixing is gonna actually stick out. Thanks for watching, and if you found this content helpful, please click like and subscribe, and also check out any other resources and videos created using the links in the description. I'll see you on the next one.